Geographics Canada live from the Innovations Theatre in Toronto. And um, today's, the panel right now is Post Press Success, Winning with Finishing. And I would just have to say that this is one of my favorite topics because um, at the end of the day, most printers put ink on paper, which is what they're supposed to do. But in order to separate themselves from each other and help their clients separate themselves from each other, finishing and effects and specialty effects and specialty finishing have become very, very relevant to, the, uh, to making print a high va value communication. As well, I would like to add that I j recently did a survey of 100 of the top uh, brand and advertising agency print buyers and I asked them in an open field to define quality. They could have said whatever they wanted. They all, almost all of them defined quality by finishing, just so you know. Um, whether or not the color was um, close enough wasn't the issue. It was was it scored properly? Was it folded properly? Was the registration correct on the varnishing? Was um, the um, was it scratched? Was it you know sticking together? So very topical to the um, people who still do uh, consider printing a craft have the budgets to use the specialty technologies. So with all that being said, um, my name is Deborah Korn and I'm the Intergalactic Ambassador to the Printiverse, self-appointed uh, by the way. Um, I provide information and print inspiration to the print and integrated marketing community with a little fun in the mix. And um, I am doing panels here at Graf uh, Graphics Canada. And I'd like to uh, thank you gentlemen first for joining us. And uh, let's start with you. Who are you and what do you do? Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Michael Steele and I'm the owner of Sydney R. Stone and & Company. And we specialize in uh, print finishing. So uh, essentially the supplier of equipment to the industry and uh, have been for since 1951. Hi, I'm Timothy Mitchell and uh, my title is the Latex Czar. I work for HP and I am involved in all latex related functions at HP from the smallest latex printers to the big latex printers. Oh, you have your own. Hi, I'm Jim Tressler. I'm the vice president. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jim Tressler. I'm the Vice President of Sales for CP Borg, uh, responsible for North, South, and Central America. Hi, I'm Christian Knapp. Uh, I'm representing Scotix here in Canada, and I also work with a company called LaserX. So they're both in the finishing space. Excellent. So, um, Christian, we'll, we'll start with you, and you can use your own mic now. Um, how do your products and services add value to print and can you share a customer case story around that? Um, most printers have been struggling to make money in normal CMYK print. We've all known this and that's been a story for many printers all around the world actually, not just in Canada. And in order to try to make print a bit more relevant, uh, things like enhancement are very much becoming en vogue. And the reference story I would give here in uh, uh, Toronto, but it would also be anywhere in Canada, really are some of our customers like uh, CJ Graphics or a very large print group down in Windsor, Ontario that are using uh, Scotix Digital Enhancement Technology to try to basically make the user experience so much more impressive. And that's how these companies are benefiting from that technology and that's what we try to provide. Um, before we go on, can you explain what digital enhancement technology is and what Scodex is? I, I know that there are some people out there who might not know what it is, although I know what it is, but. Scodex is an Israeli high-tech company that uh, in effect started uh, showing publicly a Drupal 2012 with one machine and three applications. Last Drupal, they had three machines, nine applications and during that phenomenal Drupal show they sold a lot of machines, something like 10 to 15 machines almost a day. What they do and how they do it is they effectively inkjet clear polymer onto a substrate via a digital means and methods. 
So anywhere on the sheet you can apply the polymer. And once you have polymer on the sheet, you can basically build texture with it. 3D print on paper or on plastic, you could say. And wherever the polymer is, you can then add foil. So that makes it very unique because now you're addressing with extremely short run in digital and you're complementing the digital printing, whether it's with HP or with Xerox or with Conic or all the other suppliers, or in fact Litho. And you complement that with the polymer to make that a very unique customer experience. Does that answer that, Deborah? Yes, it does for me. And it's a separate unit. It's not a, a something on the press. It's its own press, correct? That is true. I guess I didn't explain that properly. What we take is we take pre-printed CMYK printed sheets, as again, could be digital, could be offset. We run that through a machine with a feeder, inkjet heads, which clear polymer is being inkjetted, and then we have drying technologies and or foiling in one pass in one machine. Thank you so much. Uh, Jim, J Jim, Jim or James? Jim, Jim? Jim's fine. Jim, how do your products and services add value to print and can you share a customer case study with us? Oh, sure. So, you know, CP Borg has been in the print finishing industry and we started out really in collation. Uh, the company was founded in 1960 and, you know, certainly we've pioneered and evolved for, for many, many, many years. Um, you know, a lot of our innovations have really come to, you know, when, when digital print went live in 1990, as everybody remembers with the DocuTech, the CP Borg booklet maker was attached to the back end of that, which was, you know, legendary in the fact that now we were not just printing, we were actually printing a document, something we could deliver that had value to that customer. Uh, we've continued to pioneer and evolve with, with that. You know, oftentimes I look at where today the paperback novel has gone and it's always it's always kind of fun for me I, I tease my customers with the same tag and that is you know we've all gone into the chapters bookstore or the barnes and noble or or somewhere and bought a paperback novel and my challenge to them is is take that paperback novel take it to the parking lot rip the cover off of it poke three holes in it put it in the three ring binder and put it back on the store's bookshelf where you got it will you pay eight to twelve dollars for the same content in a three ring binder Chances are no, the, the perception of value is actually in the bind, and the bind doesn't cost us much, but all of a sudden we have this perceived notion that it was a document, a book, and a book holds value and retains you know, some semblance of form in our mind that says that this is obviously a prestigious document, so somebody took the time to bind it. Uh, you know, and as we look at the growth of the industry, we've watched the evolutionary path of that bind quality change. So, you know, a paperback novel in the early days was a throwaway document. It was never meant to be reused. And now all of a sudden we look at these becoming heirlooms in a photo album, in a photo book, in a, you know, in a yearbook. And we've tried to migrate through technology where we're going to take that, you know, that experience for our user. Um, by being able to now produce one-off documents. One-off documents, you know, a personalized photo album that you're going to order from a provider. Well, you know, all of a sudden, the binding has raised the prestige of that document immensely, not just the, the spots on paper. Thanks so much, HP. Um, how do your products, and well, the, you have a lot of them, so you'll have to limit it to, to one of them or a few of them, but in general, how do your products and services add value to print and um, whichever one you, you would like to discuss, do you, can you share a case study about that? Sure. Our product, my product is latex, so I'm just going to deep dive latex. What latex adds to print, latex was developed uh, going on nine years now. Uh, we've been in the market. It is a large format and grand format technology. It is a water-based ink. We have multiple innovations on the ink. HP is an ink innovator. I mean, you could almost say that what we are in the printing space is an ink innovation company because we develop our own inks, we develop our own print heads, we develop all our own printers. So a latex printer is end-to-end -end HP technology. We invented it, we've refined it, we've continued to develop it, and it's been tremendously successful for us. We have all the advantages of using our thermal print heads using latex. We have all the advantages of using an ink that is both indoor and outdoor durable. If I had to say in the print space, what we're adding is a tremendous level of versatility. Um, when I came to latex, I've been with HP for almost seven years. We were 
printing on a lot of the same things other companies were printing on, scrim banner and adhesive vinyl. And in that space, in this you know, past six and a half years, we've gone from printing on all type of digital textiles, fabrics, wall coverings, non-woven wall coverings, paper wall coverings, PVC wall coverings, just in the wall the door. covering space. The door. HP loves the door. Yeah. We, we are, in fact, I would say Latex is probably printing 60% of the actual capacity of what you can print on. There's still probably 40% un, undeveloped applications that, we, certainly, um, we probably have 60% of applications that we've developed and the other 40 are still left to be undiscovered or, or refined further. Uh, many people out there doing things with latex printers that we don't even know about because the printer is extremely versatile. It's a roll-to-roll -roll printer. At, the, at this time, latex is a two-inch or a three-inch core proposition, but there's not much on a three-inch core that I can't print on. There's very little out there that won't print on a latex printer. So. What we're kind of placing in the in the space is, are there upholstery, for example? Do you want to try to print on upholstery? I have people printing on upholstery. Leather, I printed on roll leather. There's so much out there to try to print on, and the latex printer has prov has proved to be an extremely versatile complement to do those kind of innovative that type of innovative printing. Thanks so much, Sydney. I'm just calling you Sydney, even though that's not yeah, your name, which is weird, but. Me. I like. I just like the name Sydney Stone. I love it, Sydney. Thank you. Um, I'm going to say that probably one of the uh, the unique uh, finishing applications that we've worked really hard to develop over the last couple of years is uh, our lamination films. Uh, traditionally, copy centers had little access to some of the more uh, exotic offerings in the term of in terms of lamination. Um, and the secret was really the film. Uh, most of those films were available only in very, very large uh, rolls for trade lamination purposes. And it was just out of the realm for somebody to produce very small quantities using this type of textured lamination. So we've done a, a, a successful job at converting into much smaller quantities by rewinding and slitting uh, a lot of the different films such as soft touch. And it, it, the other advantage is we're able to supply films that have uh, variable adhesive. So if you're laminating an offset piece or laminating a digital piece, you're going to have the correct, correct adhesive to ensure that your uh, customer is going to have a product that's not going to uh, either deteriorate or fall apart on them. Um, in terms of a customer case study, what we've been able to do successfully really is, is bring it almost down to the franchise level where somebody in a small copy center environment can produce work and we've just added foil actually, I forgot to mention that, that uh, can be added to this lamination by uh, printing toner over top of the lam and then going through a foiling process. And again, all those products are available in the right quantity at the right price. So somebody could actually arrive at our showroom and say, you know, I'd like to buy one roll of this, one roll of that, without having to purchase, uh, you know, a year's supply of product. Thanks so much. Um, part, part of the, um, I'm a, by nature, I'm a print customer. I come from advertising agency world. I worked in some of the biggest uh, agencies for over 25 years. And um, what recently, I just took a bunch of suppliers with me to agencies and brands in New York City to tell them about the new opportunities in digital printing and um, finishing, uh, digital finishing and, and finishing. And um, something that is very interesting is that they are completely unaware. The customers, the print customers are completely unaware of the new technologies and the new possibilities. As much as the industry would want you to think that everybody knows, as much as the printers would want to say that they know how to communicate with their customers, I'm here to tell you that they have no idea what is going on out there. So with that being said, the finishing manufacturers and suppliers really need to be marketing partners as well to help the, the printers explain to their customers what is possible. So with that being said, I'll start with you, Sydney. I know it's not your real name, but I just like saying Sydney. How, are, um, how do you help your customers market the value of finishing and to theirs? To theirs. Or, or do you not? 
Uh, we do, actually. We participate. Um, one of the things we feel very strongly about is our demo facility. Um, our demo facility is not only there to uh, allow customers to see the machines in operation, but in many instances, we're running customer applications and even videoing customer applications, uploading those videos to YouTube so that they can actually see uh, their samples or their product being run in our equipment. Um, but that's something that we work very hard at. If somebody would like products produced for their clients, uh, even you know, 10 or 15 sample pieces, then that's the type of work that we facilitate and work hard at. There's nothing better than getting the product in the customer's hands. And especially if it's their product, uh, some of our square back book technology uh, that we're seeing now, customers may have never uh, understood that that could be possible with a booklet, a stitched book. So. Even if a customer doesn't have that particular machine, sometimes we'll provide a couple of samples that they can provide to their customer. So we work hard at, uh, at uh, that aspect of it. Now, HP, I'm going to skip you for now because you don't technically make finishing equipment, but I'm going to bring it back to a different form of the question. We'll go to Skodex, if you don't mind. How sure. are you helping your customers translate the value of finishing t to theirs? How are you helping the printers talk to the, their customers about Scodex? Uh, Scodex follows a, a two-pronged uh, approach here. One is, of course, on the corporate level. So people from the corporate organization in, in Israel, they will integrate with many of the major brands. And uh, New York is a perfect example, but the same is true for other countries. Uh, Canada, in that sense, is a bit specific because much of the print specifying at the corporate level, brand level, is done out of the U.S., for particularly the packaging side. But we also integrate with local uh, brands on a local level. So when we have visitors here today at the booth or when we talked about the marketing agencies in the Toronto area, we do that. So we do it in a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, corporate, worldwide, many efforts, many approaches, many seminars, and on the local side, we do the same thing. We integrate with the marketing agencies to make them aware of what the technology is and what it does so that they're aware that they can ask it of the printers. That's the first approach. And once they understand what the benefit and the value is, and there are several in, uh, studies by Caltech and other University of Leicester, uh, they have done studies to show that there is an intrinsic benefit in having 3D textured print because you engage with your customer so much better. Once you do that, you're able to either raise your prices or increase your circulation. And that is where we are telling the brands how they can target. And the other area, of course, is you can go down to prototyping level with very few boxes, very few different jobs. You can do a special invite for, I don't know, BMW or Mercedes, and you can really focus it. And once the brands understand that this is a unique marketing, digital marketing tool, they actually get it and then they engage with us. Thank you so much. And CP Borg, um, something that um, also uh, that fits into this is that the print customers don't understand all the different options of binding that there actually is. They think of saddle stitching, perfect bind, wiro, maybe a few no notch binding, maybe. So there's a, you have a, like a two pronged uh, situation. First you have to let, um, help your, your customers help theirs understand what the possibilities are and then prove the value of finishing. So uh, in, in the aspect of uh, what your products and services do. So can you uh, address it from that angle please? Sure, so you know, a lot of the education process for us is really stemmed around our partnerships. And, and partnerships don't begin and end with just you know the big brands. Our partnerships really begin and end with the end user and educating them through the entire process. So we've invested a countless amount of energy and dollars uh, in engineering into placing our products on our partners' showroom floors, engaging with their customers, working with training their sales reps and their salespeople so that, number one, you know, as we have the ability to actually run samples and work with, with clients' output, we can do it in a real-time you know, real environment. We can, uh, you know, as the world has transitioned to personalized and variable print, that's become exceptionally valuable to the agencies as they're targeting their audience to a, to a very limited, um, again, fanfare, or, or, or we're not gonna spray and pray any longer. We're gonna really kind of divulge everything into one captive piece addressed to one captive person. Uh, as a result, training and educating them on the different processes, 
uh, has become forefront for us. Again, you know, working with those partners, getting this technology deployed into areas of opportunity so that these agencies can visit, customers and their partners can visit, uh, and again, look at the different wide variety of applications that can be run. Thanks so much. Um, so as far as I know, HP does not make any finishing equipment, but you have finishing partners. And one of the um, questions and criticisms that I often get um, in any discussions I am hosting about wide format is that I never address finishing. Um, and it, it could make or break a job, quite frankly, uh, for, for a printer. Yes. Yes. Very so, much. So um, as the thought leader on that, and certainly I'm not, um, perhaps you could address it from that angle. We're, ve we're very good. HP is very good at printing lovely prints off the printer. That's, that's fairly well solved. Our weak point is explaining to a customer that, well, this very beautiful print on the printer has to get made into a something. And in the process of making it into a something, there's things you need to know. For example, if you're printing on textiles, fabrics, uh, aside from the 12 different types of fabrics and what to look for in fabric and what to uh, qualify before you load it on the printer, now that you're done with it, do you know what a hot knife is? Uh, you've now discovered you use a rotary cutter and everything is fraying. Uh, do you have any sewing capability? Uh, do you know what a silicon edge graphic system is? Do you know how you would put one together? Um, and a lot of times people don't understand that the finishing has to be thought of before you choose the fabric. You know, my recommendation is what is your application exactly? What are you making out of it? And once you know what you're making out of something, then you work backward to choose the right product and then make sure you understand the process involved in making it into this finished application. It is a critical area that I think is probably the biggest weak point for HP Latex because our strength is that we can print on everything. And our weakness is that we print on everything. And if you're going to print on everything, you need to know a lot about all this different stuff you're doing. I mean, wallpaper alone is a, a, a tremendous deep dive in understanding to be able to meet an industry's expectations. And fabric is another one. And that's usually where we run into problems. And what we're working very hard on is to fill these end-to-end -end gaps. And that really comes down to finishing partners. You know, we have a finishing partner that we work with closely that has latex printers for backlit applications and they make their own frame systems and they explain to customers how to do the silicon edge graphics and what sewing machines to buy. And when I can hand things off to them, that partner is the expert in the space of frontlit and backlit silicon edge graphics printing and that leaves me to just focus on printing pretty pictures and puts them in touch with the partner that explains the process of making it into a something because we may not necessarily have that experience but our partners do so when you are selling these machines and uh, are you making recommendations for finishing partners or are you just making education available for people to make their own choices some of both. Um, I think as, as we've developed our portfolio, HP's come to realize that these gaps are, are a real problem for a lot of our customers who, you know, we can give you the print, but now they don't know what to do with it. So I spend my time at these shows making partnerships and looking at technology and saying, you know, that actually would work really well to help us in the latex space. And they're different, say, since we're a worldwide company, we'll have partners that do things in Europe that may not have a lot of presence in the United States and vice versa. So, yes, I'm. for me, it's a partly recommendation, but it's becoming more institutionalized where we're forming, like, long-term, semi-formal partnerships with companies because it's really important, and, and HP always wants to partner with anyone that can help our customer get to their goal line. Thanks so much. I really appreciate of that. Course. So I want to uh, focus a little bit on applications because um, at the end of the day, it's great that you have all this technology, but what can you actually do with it? So starting with Skodex, uh, we're just going to go back down, down there. Um, how are your most successful customers, partner, uh, which I'm assuming are printers, how are, th how are the printers that um, have Skodex technology partnering with theirs to create some um, amazing, innovative print and marketing? Uh, that's 
multitude of effects and a multitude of ways that they do this. One of our largest clients here in Canada does it via web page. So in effect it is you're using a web presence uh, and they're taking in orders and from there they then fulfill those orders. So that's one of their ways that they're doing it. Of course other printers are using the direct and traditional sales approach where they go to their publishing customers or their clients or their marketing agencies and they show them the samples that can be produced of the technology. So that's a more conventional way of doing it. The challenge for Scotix, and I think we found a way around this is to demonstrate three dimension on a screen that is only two dimensional. So we're using our software programs to show how your business card, for example, your folded, uh, or no, your, your greetings card would look in 3D on a 2D monitor. And then if it becomes easy for you to just press a button, click and get it printed and get it shipped to you, that's where the shortcut from the printer with the web interface to the delivery effort comes. I, I just want to stop you because I think we, we had a miscommunication in the question. I want to know some of your customers who are doing really cool things with print and what, what with Skodex and what are they doing? I want to give people an idea of what can be done with it. Like, um, yeah, apologies, I must have misunderstood. No, that no, no. Question. I, I um, probably asked it weird. Um, the easiest answer there is to show samples for them. That's what they do. Yeah, but okay, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. How are you, some of your customers using your products and services to create innovative print? The uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've seen that some huge growth in in the booklet maker side of it for sure. Uh, what traditionally was. Uh, you were limited to creating a stitched book by how much paper you could fold. And it was, you know, 25 or 30 flat sheets of paper that you could fold in half. And as, you know, the market changed, people weren't looking to fold just bond paper anymore. They're all producing work that's high quality, full color output that's on, uh, you know, gloss material in the 80 to 100 pound or more range. And uh, the, the customers are now able to with the latest technology, produce books of up to 50 flat sheets. So the process uh, of, of making some booklets is, has changed, in, for instance, the yearbook market. Um, you could now produce a high quality, uh, full color document that's stitched that previously had to be perfect bound. So the, the cost of producing that and the, the time in producing that, uh, a lot of our customers have now started to offer those types of products to the to customers who, it just wasn't in the in the in the window of opportunity for a grade six or seven uh, class to have their own yearbook, now those types of products are uh, available and, and they're able to to offer that and extend their range in the marketplace. Thanks so much. So HP, coolness. What are some cool stuff people are doing with the latex printers and the finishing, obviously? Right now. Yeah, there's a rock festival in California called Coachella. And we just developed a R&D project on natural fibers. Latex, as it turns out, prints extremely well on linen, cotton, cotton linen blends, all that stuff. The crock resistance is exceptional. Uh, the resistance to uh, washing water, also exceptional. And we're pretty close to reactive pigment um, technology printing directly onto natural fibers. Uh, we partnered with a company uh, called DuraVibe uh, Premier Textile, and we found that through this process on cotton, uh, we are going to print bandanas, 22 by 22, in real time with an HP design team that's gonna design them for all of the thousands of people at the concert, and they're gonna customize their banners, and we're gonna print them in real time, and we're gonna cut them off, and then we're going to we use a heat fixation system in this case a clamshell because we need to get a little more bond to the fabric and we found putting some heat so 350 degrees roughly for 15 seconds and then we're going to trim them and then we have to seal them to make sure they don't fray and we uh, obviously have limited space to bring in certain equipment for that and then we have a time span of roughly 12 minutes from end to end and we're going to try to pull this off. Now, if everything works, everyone's going to have custom HP bandanas at Coachella. If it fails, everyone's going to have a purple head. 
Now, if they have purple heads, we figure that's like a mark that you went to Coachella, and we can somehow sell that until yeah, we meant to do that. It's a great idea. Everyone with purple heads, you self-identify we were at Coachella. But it's one of those R&D projects that we've done everything we possibly can, and sometimes you just pull the trigger and say, let's go with this. And how much durability do we have? And how much does an average you know, 20-year-old in the sun for eight hours running around wearing a latex natural fiber cotton bandana before it starts to crock or bleed and we've tried all the wash tests ultimately you got to put it out there and see if it goes but these are the kind of things that we experiment with on a regular basis you know largely a purple head would be harmless and uh, for the most part it's a short-term temporary textile application but what we're finding is these natural fibers are exceptional and we're really good on them and they look fantastic and they're fast and the latex technology can turn it around and I can bring a printer in that costs less than $20,000 to pretty much do this whole process in real time. So those just recently, we would just this will be happening in the next couple of weeks. So I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. So thanks. So we'll get to CP Borg, but then Skodex. I want to hear the cool stuff people are doing with Skodex. That's the question. But, but let me go to CP Borg first. Well, I don't know. I'm all of a sudden, I think I should have a purple head. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I think that sounded pretty cool. No, you know, I think over the last year, a lot of our projects that I think are really cool have really evolved around the silver halide replacement market. I think it's really cool to see, you know, a us deploy a technology into an area that, you know, we have 60 photographers running around shooting, you know, students' pictures and processing them real time as the, the, the photographer takes the picture, we don't see it until it's coming out of the printer through our finisher and actually building a book or a booklet that we're gonna send back to that student's family that they can, again, order more or, or process through. We, the, the silver halloid replacement market has touched so many areas in that expressions and greetings that the cool factor is beyond belief. You know, As we've done the, the personalized greeting cards, as we've done the personalized one-off photo books, as we've looked to companies that are you know, deploying the, their own um, Google library, so we're, we're now producing one-off books uh, for, for, you know, for reader's choice. Um, you know, one of the things that came to mind was a company here in Toronto. We started many years ago. And we kind of thought the, the gentleman was a little bit touched, but he uh, he actually went out and bought his own library and started a company called BookByYou.com. And we started actually printing one-off romance novels where we were actually end-to-end -end completely touchless so that you hop on his website, answer a questionnaire, it wordsmiths everything back into the actual document, my wife's hair color, her eye color, you know, the dog's name. And next thing you know, we're printing 70,000 books for Valentine's Day, one off, completely unique to that individual process. So there are so many endless cool applications, yet even the mundane applications have become cool lately, you know, with the financial reports that are personalized that we never had that capability to do. Um, to obviously see web submission documents come through, you know, a touchless workflow. And it is ultimately, at the end of the day, to watch, again, these technologies get deployed into areas that we simply haven't seen before, and to watch the agencies jump on that um, has been wonderful. Thanks so much. Okay, Skodex. <laughs> Skodified. Skodified. Cool. What yeah, for is us, they're all cool. So I know they are. That's why I'm like, it. you have to have an example to oh, share I with got, people besides my business so cards, many, which I, I love. so many examples. I mean, we, we try to do, first of all, is we show a before and after. We have uh, one example that shows a basketball. We've all seen what a basketball looks like. And you look at it, and it's CMYK printed, and it looks lovely. And right next to it, on the same sheet of paper, you've got the same basketball, same colors, but now you have it with texture. And since we've all, or most of us, play basketball, when we were young, we know what it feels like. We touch it.